Okay, welcome back. Here's part two. This is what we're going to do. We got these pulleys here. Uh, remember, four inch here, 11 and a quarter here. Just going to get the ratio right to when this is running at full RPM. This is running at the proper thousand ish. Now, uh, when you put a pulley and a bushing on a shaft like this, make sure you use some kind of grease or anti seize. Um, it's kind of obvious, but you want to be able to get this apart. You never want to fuck the next guy. Why, class? Because you're the next guy. Now, just in case you never use this type of bushing, I want to point something out. This is tapered. This is going to go in the bore. This bore, this pulley is also tapered. And there's some holes and there's some threaded holes. The way this works is the bolts go through these big holes into those threaded holes. And then this has some holes um, that are threaded as well. Those threaded holes are for when you want to take this apart. You take the bolts out of the holes and you put them in the threaded holes and then the bolts go inward and push the pulley right off. So it separates the thing. It's kind of cleaver, eh? Put a little grease on this side too so this will come apart and uh, you're good to go. Now the bushing comes with the bolts and these here are lock washers. I don't use lock washers because of this split it lets in rain any kind of contamination and it's spring steel so this is supposed to be pushing against the bolt head to keep pressure on it this design is flawed and a lot of times these break and now the part is very very loose this thing is about an eighth of an inch thick you'll never find a lock washer on an airplane i'd rather use cheap ass grade two flat washers than a lock washer so, take lock washers and throw them in the garbage. Tried to get away from me there, you see that? Be very careful with this. These are cheap bolts, just snug them up. It's a very weak gun, so I'm okay with this. Oh fuck, I got this on backwards? Oh, I fucking put it on backwards. Oh, nice catch, huh? Well, I didn't expect we were going to get to see these pusher bolts in action so quick, but hey, that's what they're there for. So, uh, you thread one in, yeah, there you go. Maybe two. Might need them all. I don't know, I didn't really drive this home yet, but... Yeah, I noticed it seemed to be getting tight fast, and that's because the taper's probably backwards. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think our Harbor Fart 3 8 gun's about to give up the ghost. Well, I thought I was wrong, but it turns out I was just mistaken. Uh, I did have it on the right way. It's not going to go the other way. But it just seemed like it was getting tight too fast, and that gap should have closed a little bit more. So, better safe than sorry. Uh, I don't want this thing coming apart. Because if it does, and you're standing there, you're a fucking grease spot. Okay, that's about where those bolts are going to snap. Go uh, put the torque wrench on there. Yeah. Now, a good way to tell if the pump chop did their job, take your pinky and see if you can get it spinning like a freaky chick at a Grateful Dead show. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the moment I haven't been waiting for. I got both pulleys on. The ratio is going to be right, but can't mount it like this because this pump has been reversed the truck shop eh, I told you in part one fuck so to make this spin the right direction <laughs> did I just say direction I think I did I'm trying to learn Mandarin Chinese and everything's fucked up in my vocabulary and uh yeah and I had some wine last night I guess but ugh, shit this sucks <clears throat> I'm just gonna have to lay out like this not cool so, now I'm at the point where I put the 
belts on, measure it out, see what it's going to look like. Do I put it in a toolbox like this? Mount it on the side of the truck, blow some holes in the back, run the hoses in and out like that. Or do I take the pump apart, reverse it, so I can get a little bit more compact and have it laid out like the other one you saw in part one. Like this. I don't know, man. Well, the tape measure never lies, so I'm going to lay it out and we'll see what happens. Well, that there is a pretty big footprint. I'm not crazy about this at all. I'm going to have to take my tape measure and see what corner to corner is looking like. If it'll even fit in a toolbox. If i got to do a custom frame build. Or if I take the time right now, take this apart, reverse the pump again, get it back to the way it was supposed to be, and then I could just have the engine side by side. I'm kind of leaning toward that. Um, I wanted to get this thing going, but you know what? It's only been, I don't know, a year and a half. What's another couple of days, right? Another couple hundred bucks? Shit. I don't like this though, that's for sure. Well, that's what I was afraid of. The footprint is about half the width when you lay it out this way. So it'd be great if this thing could go either way, but it can't. Uh, it's directional, so it needs to be flipped around again inside. So I got to decide whether I take it apart, do it myself, or send it back to the pump shop that just rebuilt it. I think I'm going to send it back. They got some jigs and some tools to get that rotor in and out of there that I don't have. And it's kind of an eccentric, you know, it's kind of off-center and it's heavy as a motherfucker. So, um, I'm going to have to abort mission. Sorry, I thought this was going to be done, wrapped up this weekend. Uh, I'm going to have to make this a part three series. Uh, we'll get the frame and all that bullshit built when I get this back and lay it out. Remember, tape measure never lies. As an afterthought, uh, I'm looking at this layout. I'm liking the compactness of it. The frame's going to be kind of heavy. This thing's kind of heavy. That's a little heavy. I'm not really sure, but if I mounted this in a toolbox, I could keep the elements out of it and keep it kind of, not hidden, but protected. We do drive around in the Midwest here. And, uh, this is a, uh, give you about 22 inch depth here for safety. Yeah, say 22. Give me that. And we need a height of about eh, two feet ish. Yeah, probably 26, 27. I just happen to have a toolbox on one of my other trucks that basically holds nothing but a shovel or two, a bunch of shit, a bunch of puke, grease all over the place. Might make a perfect home for that. Let me go take a look. It's not tall enough. Damn it. Well, this one's 23 high, 34 long. A little more compact, 22 or so. This one might actually work. What do we say, 34? Uh, yeah, maybe. Well, with the current layout, it's 34 and a half inches. So I could probably shoehorn it in there. Um, wouldn't be any access though to anything. Gonna be kind of a mess. What I can do and what I probably will do narrow this gap. These are uh what did I say? B fifty sevens? I think these are B fifty sevens. Maybe drop this down to a B fifty one? B fifty two? Yeah, that's got a good ring to it. Yeah. Shorten it up a little bit. Now we're looking at uh, shit. 32. Give me an inch on each side. I mean, it's not going to be convenient, but hey, man. When you're working on your fortune, what is convenient, right? All right, somebody's losing the toolbox. All right, well, I got about an inch to play with on the other side. And that gets me. Uh, a 32 and a half ish over here um, so that'll fit I think I have to measure the inside opening make sure before I do that but uh, now instead of guessing what belt to use I want to find a piece of rope that fits in here pretty snug like uh, maybe a 5 8 rope or a half inch rope or something like that take a length of it 
get it inside the pulleys, get it to where it touches together relatively tight, and then take that length, and that's going to be the size belt you want to start with. You might have to go an inch down or an inch up. I think those are the only increments that those B-belts come in. I mean, for industry standards, you can get something with, you know, any length you really need. But off the shelf, it's going to be a B-52. I Like I say, I like the ring of that one. So we'll go with that. Um, I'll measure this up and see what belt we're going to have to use. And uh, after, I make sure that this is going to fit in the rough opening of that toolbox. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to make a box for it. And I'll just go back to the B-57. B57 spreads it out a little bit more. That gives you some room to uh, work a tool to spread the thing in and out, you know, tighten the belts or change the belts or whatever. And uh, it also means that I'm only going to have one size belt for all my bolt and goes. Eh? Keep it simple. Now, this stuff here fits perfectly in there. So I'm just going to use this, take this, wrap it around. Here, I'll start in the easy way. Get in there. Your new home, bitch. Uh, let me get my calculator out. 36 plus 16. Uh, 52. Whoa! B52. Good guess. Awesome. That's how you do that.